Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to be talking about indefinite integrals. So an important aspect of the fundamental theorem of calculus is that integrals of a function are very closely related to the antiderivative of that function. So specifically we learned that if big F of x is equal to the integral from some constant a to the variable x of f of t dt, then f prime of x, so the derivative of big F, is equal to just little f of x. And so that is what the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us. And so an indefinite integral is just conventionally used to represent the antiderivative of the function f. So here where big F represents the antiderivative of little f, we are just going to define the indefinite integral as that sort of antiderivative of the function. And so that's what this is representing. So we would write the integral of little f of x dx is equal to big F, and that just means that big F prime is equal to little f. It says that the derivative of big F is our little function uh, little f. And so that's going to be the connection that we're going to have. And since there are infinitely many antiderivatives for any function, we are going to be writing big F of x with a plus c at the end, and that plus c signifies that we are just adding a constant and adding any different constant that we want is just going to be giving us the same derivative of the function, and so it's giving us a set of all the different functions that are antiderivatives of our original function. So an important difference to remember with that is that a definite integral gives us a number, whereas an indefinite integral gives us a family of functions. For example, the integral of x would be x squared over 2 plus c, and so that plus c is signifying that x squared over 2 is one antiderivative, as is x squared over 2 plus 100. Because if we take the derivative of either of those, the plus 100, the derivative of that piece just goes to 0. So it's not contributing to anything involved with the derivative. And we can actually connect the two using the fundamental theorem of calculus. We, connect, we can connect the definite integral to an indefinite integral. And what that says is the integral from a to b of f of x dx, so a definite integral, is equal to the integral of f of x dx, the indefinite integral, evaluated between a and b. And so that's going to be our connection between the two, and so that's why remembering the indefinite integrals can help us a lot when we are doing things with definite integrals. So let's go through a few indefinite integrals that are important to remember, because they show up fairly frequently. The first one is if we have the integral of a constant times f that is equal to the constant times the integral of f. Another one is if we have addition inside an integral, we can break that up and that becomes addition of integrals. So the integral of the quantity f plus g is equal to the integral of f plus the integral of g. We can also pull out, uh, we can also figure out that the integral of k dx, so a constant with respect to x, is equal to just that constant times x plus c. Um, we also have x to the n, the integral of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 as long as n is not negative 1, and if n is negative 1 that's just the integral of 1 over x which is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And all of these plus c's are just signifying if you stick in any constant the derivative of that is not going to change anything. The integral of e to the x is just e to the x plus c. The integral of b to the x is b to the x over the natural log of b, again, with a plus c at the end. The integral of sine x is negative cosine x, and the integral of cosine x is positive sine x, both of them with a plus c at the end. The integral of secant squared is tangent, and the integral of secant x times tangent of x is secant x plus c. And then the integral of cosecant x that's negative cotangent x plus c, and the integral of cosecant x cotangent x, that's negative cosecant x, again, with a plus c. Um, we also have a couple inverse trig functions that are useful to remember, although if you can't remember these, you will be able to figure them out using trig substitution, which is something I do have a video that will be coming out uh, fairly soon that will cover how to do that. And so the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1, that's inverse tangent, the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1, that is inverse sine. Um, the integral of 
a hyperbolic sine or sinh, that is cosinh or hyperbolic cosine, and the integral of hyperbolic cosine or cosinh is just sinh or hyperbolic sine. I hope this was helpful in at least giving an overview of indefinite integrals. Uh, please check out some of my other videos if you haven't already so that I can be able to make these videos. Have a great day and good luck with the rest of your math!